Okay, hello and uh, thank you for joining me today. It's Mel from Inkspired Crafts. Um, I'm not doing face <laughs> face on to the camera today. I've had um, a rather large tooth ex uh, extracted last Friday and my face is still quite swollen. Um, so, yeah, that and the bags under my eyes are not sleeping very well. Really doesn't look appealing today, so uh, you'll have to excuse me for not doing, uh, not starting the video face to face. Um, okay, so a uh, couple of things I want to just talk to you about first, or show you rather, is um, some, some DSP that I've bought. Um, when I looked in the catalogue at it, I really didn't fancy it. I don't, um, I'm not one for fruit and vegetables on paper or on cards, but uh, I ended up getting this one. It's, I've just got to check what it's called, sorry. Mediterranean Blooms for one particular reason, uh, scrapbooking. Okay, so last year I went to Limoni with my mum and got some photos. Unfortunately, I was going to do some lovely scrapbooking pages for you to show you. And my printer decided it was going to jam the paper. So I've got to order some new ink and things. So hopefully I'll be able to do that and show you that in the next week or so. But this paper is fantastic for um, Limoni. As you can see, this is one of the pictures I've taken when we were out there. And as you walk down through Limoni itself, all of the houses have got their house numbers on plaques smaller than this, but with lemons on. And there's um, there's like bits in tiles almost in the um, walkways with lemons on and that. So I thought between the beautiful blues and then I'm gonna, gonna fussy cut out these lemons, it will make a really, really good scrapbooking page. And I, I'm gonna do a double spread initially and then I've not really decided on that on the rest of it but I'll just show you the rest of the paper in the pack because it's it does work really well for you know for Mediterranean holidays and um, you know, anything like that but as I'm restarting my scrapbooking workshops in September as well I thought I need to start doing some scrapbooking and showing you guys just what I do. Um, I ran them for nine, ten years before COVID. As you can see, there's a lot of blues. So the, um, you know, if you don't like the actual big oranges and that, then the the blue side is is really nice as well. And that's one that I've already shown you, and then there's. You see oranges as well for and that one's got a small blue little pattern on so that's the first lot of paper i wanted to show you um the second lot is this um what's it called full of life it's and it is really full of life. It's beautiful. This is the full of life suite. And um, these papers, I mean, they're, they're, they look lovely in the catalogue, but, you know, they really are. I'll just take them out and try not to get all the bits I've cut up. Yeah, they really, really are beautiful. 
rainbows, almost like star, um, some burst sort of patterns. And you've got water, water backgrounds, watermark backgrounds. There's all sorts in there, but the colours are absolutely beautiful. And obviously they work really well with uh, male, female, kids, any age of uh, the cards really. Um, this is the stamp set. Um, I haven't opened... Oh, you get the... These are the iridescent gems. They're really pretty. If you can see those. The ribbon. I haven't opened this yet. I've literally picked it up. I don't want to cut the ribbon, I'm trying to find the... Ah, there's the start of the plastic. So this is, this is really pretty as well. I don't know whether you'll be able to see, be able to see it. It's an iridescent, shimmery ribbon. So that's really nice and you get the um you know there's the stamp set and, and these are the dies so so just starting to have a play with this really and um i've not made any cards yet using this so the card I'm going to do today is one of these uh, it's a diamond fold card um, I think it, when this was made um, by my upline Amanda I think she called it a, a Christmas cracker card but um see for christmas that worked really well but we're going to make it in some of the full of life just make sure i can see, you can see that full of life um dsp now i have cut the dsp but i might not use the one that i've cut i might need to cut a different one I'm just not quite sure yet because as I say, I've not made it up so I don't know how it's going to look and I might want something a bit more um well a bit different okay so we start off with our card base and it is four inches by eleven and a half and that is ten point two centimeters by twenty nine point two Okay, then we're going to score it at one and three quarters or 4.4, 4, three and three quarters, which is 9.5 centimetres, five and three quarters, and that is 14.6 centimeters then seven and three quarters 19.6 centimeters and the last time is nine and three quarters and that's 24.7 centimeters okay so You've basically got six panels now and my line doesn't show up very well but on my six inch mark on here I have got a line that I've coloured 
um, just so that it stands out better. But what we're going to do is taking the first score line and placing it on that six inch line. Then going to position the second score line on there as well. and score from corner to corner. Hopefully you can see that score line. Yeah. Okay, and now you want to turn it around. So we're going to score from this point down to this point. So again, it would have helped if I'd remarked my line i think but i can just about see it so placing the two points on the six inch and score again and now we need to do the same on this part here okay so that that will then give you this bit. So go in from the top like so. And then from there down to there. You just move that out of the way now. Okay, so that's all the scoring. It's quite a lot. <laughs> um and it's it's quite um quite easy to do if you've got a mark on there you could use if you haven't got a scoring board you could use your trimmer and you just use this line here just to to line up the two points and then use your scoring blade to score okay so now I'm going to burnish all of the score lines apart from this middle one. This middle one I'm just going to turn over and press it back out with my bone folder so it's almost cancels it out. But the rest of them Do need to be burnished. I'll come on to the diagonal ones in a moment once we've got these ones all done. So for a moving card, you need to make sure you you do um, the fronts and the backs, and then nearly done okay so what you need to do just to get this to fold the way you want it to 
let's just push those in and it will fold like so and that fits into a standard size envelope and it isn't too bulky either at that point so for in order to ensure that it doesn't get too bulky be really careful with the number of um, embellishments and layers that you put on these cards because obviously the thicker it is um, it's already when it's folded up you know you've it's thicker than a normal card would be but it's still you still have plenty of room so that's the card base done for um these edges here we've got some designer series paper already cut and these are one and a half by three and three quarters and you need two of those so they're going to fit on there Let's see if um see if I've got any glue left in this one that's still working just about okay so again as with all of the measurements there is an eighth of an inch border um, the centimeter measurements for this is 3.8 by 9.5 Okay, so that's that bit. The um, I've got a silver piece to fit on there, and that is the same size. So that works out as two and three quarter inch squared, or seven centimeters squared. Now, this is the piece that I've cut to go on top of it but I was just wondering about using something else um, but I haven't worked out which whether to use something spotty something more like this and I can match the colours possibly down this end more or some little squares or one of these will sort of go because it's all the purples um not made up my mind but at the same time what what's going to fit on there is going to be quite um, a bit more detailed I'll show you what I'm going to put on there I've cut them out already so it's a heart well it's two hearts really you can cut it so that they're joined together Or it can sit like like that or you can have one or the other separate but it's a heart and then I've got this piece of silver and then when I've punched put out all the little bits it's gonna have happy birthday on it so I think I might stick with the planer colour at the back actually again so that's got eighth of an inch border I haven't made one of these cards for a long time so quite glad I remembering how to do it let's just 
pop that in there. It's always easier to put this on flat. And if you wanted to, you could put um, designer series paper on all of these bits. But I'm, I'm not going to, and I'm not sure I'm going to use this bigger bit. whether to leave, put them both on together or whether to just have the one it's going to be quite Okay, so what I'll do first of all is punch these little bits out. Get all of these. These are the um, just wanted to say dies. These are really nice as well. Really easy to just put a few little blobs on or you can use your um the adhesive sheets and stick it on so and then cut it out so that it's just like sticking a sticker on top and you can see where they go because of the uh there's a line around so that's where the the word actually fits. Um, there's a few in there. There's happy birthday. Feel better soon. Um, you're too kind. Celebrate. And then there's some little um, little dies of parcel and some various other bits and pieces. just pop some more of this on Oops. so you don't need to put a, an awful lot on because it will hold and just place that onto the silver. It's really quite effective the way that it stands out then. And now I can just fiddle with this a bit because I'm not sure at the moment. Might put that on there and then that on dimensionals. Gonna stick this one down first. And then again, this could have been cut using the um, adhesive back. Um, Adhesive sheets as well, really, it would have been really easy <laughs> to then just peel off the back. There isn't a huge gap. Right. That's that bit, and then just some mini dimensionals. On here.
so that's the front and then if you turn it over i've got a white piece which is two and three quarter inch squared um to go in the back and that's six, uh, seven centimeters squared this cardstock that i'm using is very burst so i'm going to use um the berry burst ink and in here there is a happy birthday um there and it's all sorts of it's a bit of grungy stuff and some hearts and flowers well, leaves i'm just going to use the happy birthday It's a photopolymer. Um, so ideally you need to use a stamping mat or um, something as a as a cushion. And don't forget when you're stamping this one you need to stamp it at an angle few gentle taps and then move that out the way you just again fits in there nice and neat and there's hard so while it looks quite technical with lots of scoring it is actually really quite straightforward and a lot easier to make than it looks um, so that's a Christmas one so that was made a few years ago it's got quite a lot of silver on, so I'm not going to put any extra bling on it. But, uh, so that's that one. So I hope you enjoy making this card and uh, yeah, have a go and do let me know. Do post any cards that you make for my tutorials on my Facebook page or send me a comment. And uh, be good to know whether you uh, whether you're managing to do them or whether there's any tips or anything that I can come back with. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye.